What? How? How did you get in here? What are you doing in this town? Get out! Get out while you can! What's wrong? You don't see anything wrong with a quiet little town full of friendly people in the middle of a blasted wasteland? No. Well, yes. But it's all a trick. Don't you know anything? Did you just crawl out of a vault or something? Just about everyone in the wasteland knows to avoid Andale, and they're right to do it. People wander in here, and they don't wander back out. You should. Otherwise, you'll end up just like the rest. What? You don't believe me? Just look in the basements. Or out in the shed. You'll see what I mean. Run, stranger! Run! Hey there, stranger. I got something I want to talk to you about. I couldn't help but notice that you were poking around in Bill's shed. So, did you find what you were looking for in there? You're right, it sure would have. You know, you're a breath of fresh air. Every time someone discovers our little secret, we have to hear about it. It's always, oh, how can you do this? Or, you're such terrible people. Or, please not me, I have a kid in Rivet City. Well, I have kids too. Family first, that's the way it works in Andale, from the day that the first four families decided to stay here. You're not bad, stranger. Stop on by any time and ask Linda for one of her special meat pies. Oh, old man Harris? Don't mind him. He's gone, you know, a little soft in his later years. Ever since Gladys died, he just hasn't been the same. Did he now? I've talked to him about spreading rumors. I guess I'll just have to have another little chat with him. Every time he does this, he scares our new friends off, and we love people. It's a shame when they slip out of our grubby little paws. <laughs> I work to feed my family just like every red-blooded American man should. Why, a man that can't keep his family fed isn't any kind of man at all. No, sir. Andale, greatest place there is. We win town of the year every year. We've got no end of food and no troubles at all. Yep, there's no better place to raise a family. Yeah, well, he's hit it rough. Ever since his wife died, he just hasn't been enthusiastic about the Andale lifestyle anymore. He stays locked up in his house all day, and the girls bring him his meals. He barely eats enough to stay alive. Poor guy. He's all skin and bones. You should really stop by for dinner sometime. Well, hi there. Welcome to Andale. I'm Willie Wilson, though folks just call me Bill. Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, that old kidder? Whatever he's saying, he's just pulling your leg. He's always choking that one. I feed my family, and I love my wife and daughter. What else more is there to life, stranger? Family first. And any man who says anything different is saying something wrong. And you should hit that man with a stick. Why, it's a place to settle down and raise a family. Of course, we don't just let anyone in here. The Homeowners Association is very clear on that. Besides, there's no room, as amazing as Andale is. Is it any wonder that all the houses would be full of happy families? Poor guy. His wife died and he went, well, crazy, I guess. He won't talk to any of us anymore. He stays locked up in his house all day and the girls bring him his meals. He barely eats enough to stay alive, poor guy. He's all skin and bones. Hey, you have a great day. Why, hello there. I heard there was someone new coming. How can our little family help you? Are you joking? It's fantastic here. The best town in the USA. Has been for, why, it's been so many years running that I've lost count. Well, that always was a bit off his rocker. Oh dear, I let that slip, didn't I? He used to be. Until I got married. I, I can't really say much more than that. Oh, well, no one ever asks me my opinion about anything, but I love it here. We'll see you real soon. You're new here, aren't you? Wow. I've never got a chance to talk to the new people. Dad always takes care of them before I get a chance. It's okay, I guess. There aren't a lot of kids around here, and no one who comes to visit stays around long. Dad says it could be worse, that there are a lot of starving kids in other places. But still, I wish I had more kids to play with. 
The same things that all parents do. My mom cooks and cleans the house, and my dad goes to work with Mr. Wilson. They work in the basement, or sometimes in Mr. Wilson's shed. Dad says that when I'm older, I'll come to work with him, and we're in the family business. It's swell, except I wish there were more kids, and my dad says I'm going to have to marry smelly old Jenny Wilson someday. He keeps saying stuff to my mom about keeping the family going, and how when him and Mr. Wilson were brothers, they didn't want to get married. It's weird. That means Mr. Wilson is my uncle, and Jenny is... something. I don't know. It seems weird to marry her. Gosh, I wish I could go with you. Well, hello. Welcome to Andale, winner of the best town in the USA contest. Well, I don't right know. But we're the best one. Isn't that what matters? I mean, we're the winners. Us. Not Springfield. Not Rockville. Us. So like I was saying, welcome to Andale. What can the Smith family do for you? Oh, of course. Here you are. Enjoy. Has he been spreading his stories again? Poor guy. I'll just have to have Jack give him a talking to. It's the best little town there is. We don't have a care in the world here. I mean, honestly, what more do you need to know? Really, don't be such a stranger. If you're going to get yourself killed out here, you mind doing it further away from our bunker? I don't want your corpse stinking up our little patch of heaven. Defender Anne Marie Morgan with the Outcasts. But all you need to know is that I've got a gun and a low tolerance for screwing around. We call ourselves the Outcasts, and we collect technology to preserve it from tribals and idiot locals. And before you ask, we were cast out from that company of Zeros, who call themselves Lion's Brotherhood of Steel. Way we figure it, if traders think we're too harsh in following orders, we're probably doing something right. We aren't recruiting, kid. Old sap lions might trust walk-ins, but we don't. But if you want to help out, well, we might be able to work out a deal. You bring in technological devices, and we'll pay you a finder's fee based on the device. But Protector Kasdan would have to okay it first. We may be the best equipped people in the world, but we've still only got so many people out there looking to recover the past technology. Locals like you can cover more of the wastes to uncover technological relics like power armor or power cells. We know their value better than any junk trader, and we've got more ammo stores, so you can expect a better trade for the tech. Okay, but first you'll have to talk with Protector Kasdan. You can work out the details with him. Back to stare, back to stare in awe at the outcasts? Don't you have something better to do, kid? We collect technology, and most people want what we've collected. Right now, we're pretty much stuck defending this fort, but that won't be forever. Once we regroup, we'll continue our work and keep moving back west. You mean apart from the fact that they ditched their mission and went native? Sure. I bet you don't mind them being cuddly with the locals. But when we came out here, we had a mission to do, damn it. But now they're wasting their time protecting yahoos like you, while Ahab Lyons is off chasing his super mutant white whale. Huh? And here I thought we had the only remaining copy of that. Anyway, I don't know if the old man's going to die from them, but he sure as hell looks like he's going to drag his soldiers down with him. But he's not wasting any of our time anymore, damn it. Later. Defender Rococo Rockfowl, at your service. Gotta be careful out here, mister. Don't shoot at me or my friends. I think we'll get along just fine. Nope. Sorry. Protector Kasdan says the locals around here are barely smarter than the mole rats. But Morgan said we might have some work for an outsider. Talk with her if you're really interested. We've got power armor and big guns, and we're the ones doing the talking right now. Usually, that's all a person needs to know, and they stop asking questions. You going to stop asking questions now? I used to like serving with them. I really did. But you know, 
the technology has to come first. Elder Lyons was nice and all, but we don't rescue technology by being nice. He was wasting my time, and my pop didn't raise me to have my time wasted. So when Kaz didn't left to continue the mission, I followed. Bye. I'm Protector Henry Kasdan, leader of the Outcasts. This had better be good. Normally, I wouldn't be wasting my time talking to a local. But Morgan tells me you can make yourself useful. So, interested in collecting technology for us? It's simple enough. Bring in technological devices, and we'll pay you for what you find. Big things like power armor or energy weapons are best, but we'll take things like sensor units or spare parts, too. You never know what's important. In return, we'll pay you with your choice of 556 ammo, grenades, stim packs, or right away. I'll bet they're more useful to you out there anyway. That's what I like to hear. You can start immediately. You'll report directly to me. I'll take in your gear and dole out your pay. Now get cracking. Let's see what you've got. We can always use another one of these. How'd you like your payment? There. Everyone's favorite. What would we do without them? We can always use another one of these. How'd you like your payment? Here. Enjoy them in good health. Or at least, when you'd like to be in good health. Okay, then. We were cast out for our dedication to the Brotherhood's true goals. Lyons wanted to play hero to the locals instead of doing his job. We were proud to leave him, so we kept the name Outcasts and wear it with pride. A big fuck you to the old man. He may have struck our names from the Great Codex, but we'll be vindicated in the end, and our names will be restored. Which one? The original Brotherhood out west, or the shit that Lyons turned it into out here? I mean the Brotherhood from out west, back around California. We knew what we were doing back there. We didn't waste time with delusions of heroism. We were collecting still glowing embers from the ashes of humanity. Before civilization's fire died completely. We didn't worry about saving individual communities. We worried about saving the progress of humanity itself. Oh, he used to be as tough as the rest of us. It wasn't so long ago. We fought side by side to scourge the pit. But somewhere, he went soft. Stopped looking at the big picture and started trying to save every tribal and illiterate community he found. When he had us helping those savages instead of recovering tech that could help us all, that's when we objected and became outcasts. The Brotherhood came out here to recover technology from the eastern cities and bases. If lions won't do it, then we will. And when we resume contact with the Western elders, Lyons is going to be put in his place. Even if that place is in front of a firing squad. All right, then. Bye. My, my, my. You certainly do look a little bit worn out from your travels. Oh, just look at my terrible manners. I'm Agatha. It's so nice to meet you. Now, what brings you all the way out here? Don't worry about me. I'm just fine out here. My husband, rest his poor soul, saw to it that our house was well protected from the elements and the inhabitants of the wastes. Well, that's kind of you to say. Yes, he's gone. After he built this place, we spent many happy years together. We decided to cut off contact with the outside world and just depend on each other for comfort and company. Oh, oh, goodness, no. I have a supply caravan that passes here maybe once a week. I trade with him for whatever I need, and I stock up enough till they return. Besides shelter? Well, I offer something in the way of entertainment. I play songs on my homemade violin, and people trade me goods. If not in person, I use my husband's old radio set. The men in the caravan say it keeps their morale up on lonely nights in the wasteland. Oh, you are a clever one. 
Yes, that's exactly the problem that I have with it. It doesn't quite play all of the notes correctly, and I have to constantly tinker with it. Yes, my husband was very proud of the setup. He tinkered with that thing for years to get it working. I've tried to use it to get whatever I need, but I've never gotten a reply. Thank you. While my husband had his hobbies, I'm afraid mine was making that sorry instrument. I only wish I could replace it with something better. But now that you mention it, um, yes, there is. My training depends on my violin. Without it, I have nothing to play, no way to make music. If you can bring me a violin, a better one, I'd feel much more secure. Yes, very sad, isn't it? Sad to think that no more musical instruments will ever be made the old way ever again. <sighs> well, fortunately, I know where perhaps the last real violin in the world exists. If you give me your word that you will recover it, I will tell you more. Well, that's just so sweet of you. I feel bad sending you off with nothing like this. I have a small amount of ammunition that my husband left behind. A box of odds and ends. I don't think I've opened it in years. If you do this for me, you're welcome to take whatever you need. Oh, I don't think I've been this happy in years. As promised, here's the key to the ammunition box. It's right under the radio table. Before you leave, I have some information that may help you, at least a place to begin. It all starts with my great-great-grandmother Hilda back in 2077, before the bombs fell. Of a kind, yes. Hilda sent a good deal of letters to my great-grandmother Mary, who passed them on, and so forth. I suppose the correspondence could be considered a diary of sorts. It certainly is a long time. That precious instrument has been through a lot. Anyway, Hilda was quite a special woman, classically trained and exceptionally talented at the violin. Her pride and joy was her Stradivarius violin. I can only imagine how exquisite this instrument must have been. When the war reared its head, she was invited by Vault Tech into Vault 92, they claimed the vault would be dedicated to preserving musical talent. vault Tech was always promoting the vaults being used for the preservation of the arts and all that nonsense. Hilda couldn't pass on a chance to meet many of the other musical talents of the world, so she accepted their invitation. Then the bombs fell, the vault was sealed, and my family never heard from her again. She kept it in a special pressurized case. Inside the case is the perfect temperature and humidity for the instrument. If the case is still functioning, the Stradivarius would be in perfect shape. Hilda Stradivarius was named the Swa Stradivarius. All of them had names. That's what I want you to get. That's the catch. I have no idea where it is. I'd suggest making your way to Vault Tech headquarters in the D.C. ruins. That would be a good place to begin. Good luck! She was quite a special woman. Hilda was her name, classically trained and exceptionally talented at the violin. Her pride and joy was her Stradivarius violin. I can only imagine how exquisite this instrument must have been. When war reared its head, she was invited by Vault Happily, she accepted. Not too much, I'm afraid. It was fabricated way back in 1714 by a famous Italian craftsman named Antonio Stradivari. He had made a bunch of Stradivarius violins, actually, and each one was individually named over time to identify them. They are regarded as the most outstanding instruments ever made, and no two sound alike, they say. Incredible. Since the bombs fell laying waste to most of the world, it may be safe to say that this could be the last surviving violin of its kind. Well, from my great-great-grandmother's diaries, I have deduced 
that she had a special pressurized case created for it. Hopefully, the Swa Stradivarius was in the case when she... Well, you know. I hope you're not thinking of doing anything dishonest. You gave me your word. Well, okay. I'm sorry. I wish I did. All I know is that Vault Tech intended it to be a protective environment for the world's musical talent. When the bombs fell, the vault was sealed and the rest is a mystery. Perhaps when you find it, you can find some sort of a record of what occurred inside. From what I gather, it's located in the ruins of D.C. I got the location from one of the supply caravans. They told me it had extremely high security and something they call a main frame inside. I'd imagine it's quite dangerous. I'd be careful if I was you. Be careful. I don't want to be responsible for getting you killed. <laughs> 